brace yourself. This is gonna hurt. Hey guys, welcome to my Tartaglia guide as of Genshin Impact 3.6. Child is one of the best Hydro DPS enablers in the game ever since he came out in version 1.1. His Hydro application is still the fastest in the game because of his unique Riptide effects. Child can look to be somewhat difficult to play because of the infamous cooldown mechanic, but I'll break it all down in this video. I've been a Tartaglia main for about 2 years by this point, so I'll have some tips and tricks to share with you. In this video, I'll be covering everything you need to know about Child, so let's just jump into it. Let's start with the most complicated part of his moveset, Riptide. Yeah, not even going into his primary moveset. Riptide is the status unique to Tartaglia that is applied on an enemy through several methods. Depending on how you hit an enemy with it afterwards, Riptide will do different things. But being real for a second, these four things sound so similar to one another and have some pretty lengthy descriptions. So I'll try to simplify the explanation. Riptide Burst happens when you kill an enemy with Riptide on them and what it does is cause an explosion that then applies the Riptide status onto nearby enemies. Riptide Slash occurs when you hit an enemy with a normal or charged attack in your melee form. This is generally the effect you'll be getting the most since you'll want to be in his melee form for most playstyles. Riptide Blast happens when you hit enemies affected by Riptide with your melee burst that will remove the status and cause an AoE explosion, but in practical team rotations you'll barely be seeing that one. And lastly, Riptide Flash deals 3 ticks of hydro damage on the enemy. This one doesn't matter much in his gameplay since you get it from hitting an enemy with an aimed charge shot, which you are also not going to see very often when playing him optimally. Child is still the best Hydra applicator in the game to date, no questions asked. Those Riptide effects I mentioned earlier have no internal cooldown, otherwise known as ICD, meaning that they will always apply Hydra every time they're activated. Well, with the exception of the Riptide Flash. But when combined with his melee normal and charged attacks, which can only apply Hydra every 3 hits or 2.5 seconds, he will most likely overtake the application of every other element. This can mean that triggering a Vaporize with Tartaglia can be hard, but on the other hand, he can support other teammates with his extremely dominant source of AoE Hydro. Now that you know all of that, let's get into his actual talents. Starting off with his normal attack, this part of Jal's moveset can generally be ignored since most of his damage is coming from his elemental skill. However, one thing to note about it is that the scaling for the Riptide burst damage you get from killing an enemy is in this talent, should you want to invest in that. Now for his elemental skill. Insert funny cooldown joke here. But seriously, this is the bulk of Child's gameplay. Upon casting, Child will change stances from range to melee for more close combat gameplay, and convert his normal charge attack damage to Hydro. This talent is given separate scaling for said normal and charge attacks, which is why I said his regular normal attack talent can be ignored when choosing which one to level up. Your normal and charge attacks paired alongside the Riptide Slash within this talent does incredibly fast DPS and Hydro application, making up most of the reason why Child is amazing. Uh, but of course, the most unique thing about it is the cooldown. The cooldown on the skill depends on how long you have Child stay in his melee stance. The timer for it starts as soon as you either cast a skill again or swap to another party member. And for as much as you could see other players memeing it, the cooldown is manageable, if you know how to. It always starts with a 6 second cooldown at C0, and can go up to 45 seconds if you just stay in it until it forces you out. For this reason, you don't want to stay in it for too long. A good amount of time to stay in it is about 9 seconds, so you can send him in, make him do the damage you need, apply Hydro on enemies so that the rest of your team can activate reactions off of it, then swap out. From here, while you're waiting for it to be available again, you can cycle through your party using their abilities to set up your next round of damage. Now, of course, counting time in your head while playing isn't exactly easy, but there is an easy way around it. Tartaglia's burst has a 15 second cooldown, and if you're trying to make him as efficient as possible, you should be using his ranged burst before changing stances. Since it has a 15 second cooldown, you can use the burst cooldown going down to 6 seconds as a good reference of when to swap him out. Tartaglia's elemental burst has two variations, one being ranged and the other being melee, with both initially having a 60 energy cost. There are a few differences between the two besides the main multiplier. Let's go over the ranged one first. Child's ranged variation of his burst, referred to as Flash of Havoc, does less initial damage, but in turn, it will apply the Riptide status on enemies hit by it and refunds 20 energy to Child, effectively making it a 40 cost burst. On the other hand, the melee variant is called Light of Obliteration and has more initial damage and deals even more if it hits enemies affected by Riptide since it'll trigger an AoE explosion on every one of those enemies and then removes the Riptide status. 
All right. Uh, to be honest with you, the extra damage on the melee burst isn't worth using over the ranged one. The ranged one is just better for multiple team rotations since it applies Riptide instead of getting rid of it. Another reason to use it over the melee one is because it refunds your energy, lowering your energy recharge requirement, as well as making it easier to always use his burst at the start of a new rotation, as a quick way of dealing a huge amount of damage and reapplying Riptide on the enemy. Unless you're trying to finish off an enemy at the end of the Abyss Floor or in the Overworld and need a bit of extra damage from the melee burst, I wouldn't use it. Child's first ascension passive makes the Riptide mark last on enemies for 8 seconds longer. This doesn't change much about how you want to play him. Or at all. Just a nice bonus. His Ascension 4 passive lets him also apply the Riptide status with a crit, melee, normal, or charged attack, whereas before, you could only apply it with a charged shot or his ranged burst. A huge upgrade for his kit to feel complete in his playstyle. For Child's utility passive, he has the currently unique effect of being able to give a level to your entire party's normal attack talents, but most of his recommended teammates don't really use their normal attacks in a practical rotation, so this comes off as a pointless passive. If you're wondering which talents to level first, start with his elemental skill, since it increases your melee normal charge attack and riptide slash damage. Second is his elemental burst, with it being another big portion of his damage. Lastly, his normal attack talent can be ignored completely if you want to save resources. Now that we're done with his talents, let's go over how you can build your Tartaglia to make full use of him. Let's start with artifact sets. Since Child is an unusual case where stats can give you bigger upgrades over set bonuses because of there not being any one set that completely beats out all the rest. While I can say that the new set that was just released in 3.6, Nymph's Dream, is his overall best, all it's doing is giving him more hydro damage and attack percent. And the maximum gain that you can get from this set can be made up for in substats or by mixing pairs of two set combos. Should you not want to farm for a 4 set of Nymph's Dream, you could also mix and match a 2 set of Hydro Damage and a 2 set of Attack percent %EM or Burst Damage. Other alright 4 sets are the Shimanoa's Reminiscence or Heart of Depth. Shimanoa is not a bad choice if you already have spare pieces from trying to get Emblem of Severed Fate. The 4 set effect buffs your normal charged and plunging attack damage by 50% at the cost of 15 energy when you use your elemental skill. While that doesn't sound like too big of a trade off for more of his melee damage, most of Child's own damage is from using his burst, and burning your energy before or after using it can make it harder for you to use your burst on cooldown by the next rotation, and normal and charged attacks are only about a quarter of his total damage. Heart of Depth can also be a good option for Child, with its 2 set giving a 15% Hydro Damage bonus and the 4 set buffing Normal and Charge Attacks by 30% for 15 seconds, once again, after using an Elemental Skill. While it is a smaller buff than Shimenoa, it doesn't drain your energy. Although again, this is purely a buff to Normal and Charge Attack damage. The 4 set effect doesn't increase your Riptide or Burst damage whatsoever. So yes, while it can be a good option for Child, it doesn't account for all of his damage sources. All in all, Child's artifact sets are a substat difference between the options of Nim's Dream versus any 2 piece 2 piece combo that I mentioned earlier. However, should you want to use your resin for any one best set because he's your best man, Nim's Dream is the one to farm. Moving on to the stats you want on your artifacts for Child. For main stats, use an attack percent sands, hydro goblet, and a crit circlet, whichever crit you have less of. EM sands can also be an option if you're using him to one-shot vaporize every enemy or for a bloom team, but just use attack percent. His riptide damage is attack scaling and makes up the majority of the damage he'll be doing in the long run. For substats, prioritize crit stats, then attack percent, EM, and lastly ER. Since you should be using ranged burst, Child will typically want his ER to be in the range of 1 to 15 to 130 percent. Not too steep, but that's a general range since his energy requirements will depend on the team's setup. Let's talk about weapon options on Child. Luckily for you, he's got a lot of good options, starting from the bottom and working our way up. If you are really unlucky to not have any 4 or 5 star offensive bows along with any bow billets, you can start him off with the 3 star slingshot. You have a chance of getting this weapon in every wish you do and if you haven't fed them all, you'll probably have enough copies to max refine it. That being said, if you do have billets, Prototype Crescent, Hamayumi, or the King Squire are solid budget picks for Child. Moving on to the 4 star gacha options, we have Rust, Stringless, and Moon's Moon. Rust is alright for the fact that it buffs normal attack damage, but it loses out because it reduces charge attack damage. Stringless is a very good option for improving Child's burst damage due to the substat and passive, but I should note, it does 
does not buff his normal and charge attacks in his melee form. And Moon's Moon makes him do extra burst damage depending on the party's total energy cost for their bursts, which can be pretty good with the typical characters you want to be using with him. While we're in the 4 star section, let's talk about the Viridescent Hunt, the Battle Pass weapon. Viridescent Hunt is by far a child's best 4 star weapon, giving a crit rate subset with an effect that triggers a mini vortex that keeps enemy close together for a few seconds. Should you decide to spend for the battle pass, this weapon is definitely a good pickup for child if you don't have any of the offensive 5 star ones. Speaking of which, getting into those, the list of weapons really opens up in the 5 star category with most of them being amazing on him. Child's overall best weapon is the Polar Star, giving a crit rate substat and giving an attack bonus after using a normal and charge attack, elemental skill, and burst. Since he wants to use all of those things anyways, the effect on this weapon isn't hard to max out. While Polar Star is considered his best in slot weapon, the other 5 star bows are no slouch. Aqua Simulacra and Hunter's Path are both close second places due to their high crit stats and effects. Only downside to them it would be their low base attacks, but that can be made up for by teammates that can buff attack. Thundering Pulse and Scoured Harp are next at about roughly the same level since they also give crit, just not with passives that are as beneficial as the ones mentioned earlier. Lastly, Amos Bow is the final one I want to mention. It's not better than the ones I just went over, but it is still better than most of the 4 star options, Viridescent Hunt withstanding. Now that you know what weapons he can use, let's talk about his constellations and see if they're worth pulling for. To keep it short, no. Okay, let me explain my reasoning. C1 and C2 are only quality of life constellations, with C1 giving you a bigger time window to stay on field in his melee stance by about 2 seconds, but ultimately doesn't change much in the long run, and C2 giving child energy for every enemy that he kills. Suggesting that you're playing him with his ranged burst with enough energy recharge at C0, this constellation is hardly even noticeable. C3 is by far the biggest power spike and that's not saying much since all it does is give 3 talent levels to your skill. Child C4 is a controversial one. It makes it harder for you to vaporize Child's burst, but can be a team damage improvement. What C4 does is instead of only being able to activate Riptide effects by hitting enemies, once you mark them once, it will passively trigger Riptide Slash or Flash every 4 seconds, even if Child is off field. This can turn him into a sort of off field support or make him better at his job of enabling reverse vaporize, but can also make it hard to vaporize his burst if you mess up the timing. C5 is a small upgrade giving talent levels to his burst, last, and maybe least, C6 resets your skill cooldown if you use Child's melee burst. This might sound great at first since you think you never have to worry about his skill cooldown, but let's think about it for a second. If Child uses his melee burst instead of the ranged burst, he doesn't get refunded any energy, so unless you have the high amount of energy recharge to use his melee burst every rotation, you're basically just using him as if he was C0. So, this is really only alright for the overworld or quality of life. Overall, Child's Constellations are not really worth pulling for. Most of what they do can be made up for if you learn how to play them properly. So, let's go over how to do that. Child's got a ton of teams he can play in due to him being a Hydro character, but let's start with the best of the best right away. Child Reverse Vaporize, sometimes called Child International, is made up of Shengling, Bennett, and an animal character, typically Sucrose or Kazuha. This team is ridiculously broken in how it works thanks to the sheer amount of Hydro that Child outputs and Shengling being able to vaporize every enemy every time because both of her abilities do not have ICD. Bennett is there for the nice attack buff, giving the team some nice healing, and pyro energy particles which is especially good for Shang Ling since her burst costs 80 energy, but once up, she can snapshot Bennett's buff for the entire duration of the burst. Sucrose or Kazuo are there to let this team use the Force of Viridescent Venerer to group and swirl enemies to shred their resistance to boost this team's damage, as well as a few other perks and an elemental mastery bonus if you're using Sucrose, or elemental damage bonus if you're using Kazuo at C0. Child can also be used for Electro Charged, which is sometimes called Child Fireworks or Taser that involves using two electric characters, usually Fischl and Beta, with an open fourth slot. That slot can be filled by an animal debuffer in Sucrose or Kazuha, a healer like Bennett or Jean, or an off-field Hydro character like Sancho or Yelon. This team archetype is great at outputting large amounts of electro charge damage to multiple enemies. Also, even if Electro Charge is the archetype here, it more so relies on raw Hydro and Electro damage rather than the reaction itself, since Electro Charge as a reaction doesn't give that big of a boost in damage. 
As for dendro-related teams, Child is particularly good in Burgeon. With his fast rate of Hydra application, you're almost never going to miss the window of time between effects like Toma's Fiery Collapse to generate new dendro cores for the next hit. The team comp for this archetype usually includes an off-field dendro applicator, so you can use characters like Nahida, Yao Yao, or Kale an off-field pyro applicator like Toma, Shangling, and even Kazuha, and then some sort of healer since burgeon damage also hits your on-field character. Some good healers to use here can be Bennett, Yao Yao, Kokomi, or Diona. Child can also work in Pure Bloom and Hyper Bloom, but is a little finicky to slot in compared to other characters with off-field effects due to having to manage his cooldown, therefore time getting his Hydro application. An issue in the case of Hyper Bloom is that his Hydro application is so fast and dominant that it can sometimes overwrite the Dendro aura on enemies causing Electro Charged instead of Bloom, slowing down Dendro Core generation. For these reasons, he's not the strongest in those Dendro teams, but can still be played in them should you want to. Another team archetype you can play Child in is Freeze. You can slot in two Cryo characters plus a Sucrose or Kazuha and make this team do some pretty alright damage. This team can play to Child's strength in his Hydra application, but since Freeze isn't a damaging reaction, this isn't a team I would recommend running. Having gone over his relevant team archetypes, I would highly recommend you play him in Reverse Vape or Burgeon due to the other team archetypes having better options than Child when it comes to the Hydro characters that are preferred in those teams, or with the case of Electro Charged not being a very good reaction when compared to Vaporize or Burgeon. Not that he's particularly bad in those teams, just that there can be better options. Tartaglia and his teams can be a fair bit hard to play, so here's some advanced tips to help you out. For starters, you might be wondering how to do the best damage when you're on field using his melee attacks. To do so, one such method is using 5 sets of N2Cs, which are 2 normal attacks into a charge attack. This combo will offer you the most damage without completely depleting your stamina bar should you need to dodge. Doing around 5 sets of these will give you the perfect amount of time to swap out of him afterwards to your other teammates to use their skills to accumulate energy to start the next rotation. This combo may change with certain weapons that you equip him with, but with most of your choices, this combo can generally stay the same. Now, of course, you don't have to stick with that combo. You can basically do any number of normal attacks under 6, and that'll still do great damage. This one's a bit more of a niche tip, so I'll keep it short. Should you have Child equipped with Polar Star or the Nymph Stream 4 set, you can pre-stack your buffs before starting your rotation. Since both require you to do certain attacks before you receive their buffs, you can start by hitting an enemy with his elemental skill, followed by an N1C, a normal into charge attack. This will max out the Nymph Stream effect immediately and gives 3 stacks on Polar Star. This gives you a nice boost to his attack for his burst before using it. After you use Child's Burst, the final stack is then given to Polar Star so you can do more damage in your melee combos. This next tip can greatly increase your Child team's damage, especially Reverse Vaporize, that being Double Swirl. What Double Swirl is, is being able to swirl two elements at once for a couple of things. Reducing the enemy's resistance of both elements from the Viridescent Venera 4 set, and secondly, activating buffs that are based on swirling elements. With Sucrose and Kazuha, there are two distinct ways of doing this. With Sucrose, you start by applying Hydro with Child's stance change from his elemental skill, using Bennett Burst, swapping to Shangling and summoning Guoba, switching to Sucrose, then use a normal attack into an elemental skill. You will know if you did this correctly once you open up the status screen and see that the rest of your party's EM stats increase due to Sucrose's passives. If you're using Kazuha, the setup is actually simpler. Start with Child's skill again and use Bennett's Burst. Then switch to Kazuha and use his Burst into his press skill. You'll know if you did this right if your party has extra Hydro and Pyro damage bonus. If you're using Child in the international team, the setup and rotation for it can sound complicated when the other team setups can be freestyle for the most part. So let's break it down. Start by hitting the enemy with Child's elemental skill, Bennett's Burst, then do your respective double swirl with the character you have. Use Shang Ling's Burst, then Child's Burst, and lastly use his melee combos for about 9 seconds or so, and then swap out, to use your teammate's skills to regenerate energy. Once your team's energy is up again, start with Bennett's Burst into Child's Charge Shot, double swirl, and repeat all the rest. To this end, I'll be doing a demonstration of the notable teams I mentioned earlier to cap off the video. Time for the showcase. This is my child build for the showcase. I'll be using a split 2 set Hydro and 2 set EM, level 90 Scoured Harp at C0 with max talents. Here are my stats. Without further ado, let's see him in action. Roll the clips! Going in. Well, 
You can run. Hey, hi. Sit down. Oh. Yeah. 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 Let's light it up. One with wind and cloud. Keep on your string. Into the wind. Hey. Me, Mommy. Everybody stand back! Supporting fire! Yeah, riptide! No time to lose! No time to lose! I see everything! Help. The Temple of Wisdom! I'm going in! All in leaves. Adorn Riptide. One with wind and cloud. Oh, so so. Cool it. Punishment. You can't run. Cut. You can run. Can't hide. Yeah. No time to lose. Brace yourself. This is gonna hurt. Let's wrap up this video. Child is still one of the most broken Hydro characters in Genshin Impact, with his crazy good AoE Hydro application and scaling. He may seem a little bit unwieldy at first due to his unique cooldown gimmick, but once you get used to it, he'll become a powerhouse that will not disappoint you. Let me know with a comment down below if you enjoyed this full guide format of videos and if this was of any help to you. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you back for another video. See ya.